This is DrNightClass.com, online supplementary tutoring service. What is Night Class? It's pre-recorded lectures that have been edited and mastered. The overall tone of Night Class is focused on unveiling medical concepts. And, you know, and why those are important is because for the types of exams uh, you all take in medical school and the amount of information um, that's dumped upon you guys, the takeaway is you need to understand medical concepts and to use them as like tools in a tackle box to, to solve questions on the exam. Uh, without that, um, there's a default of people just uh, memorizing. Another key feature of night class is the heavy integration. As you're watching night class from week one to week two to week three, we integrate as we go forward. So as you come into week two, you'll see week one material, but the pertinent things that are most test questionable, you'll see them constantly appear as you go like throughout your night class subscription. This is a big thing underlining here. There's no memorizing. The key feature of night class is what's called concept sheets. They can integrate and help you remember medical-based concepts. Now, if you were to get a PowerPoint lecture from your professor, you may see they have 90 PowerPoint slides. Night class is filtering and extracting all the pertinent test questionable information. I average one concept sheet per every eight to nine lecture PowerPoints. Why this is relevant is because when you get to what's called your study week, you don't want to go through 1,200 PowerPoint slides. You'd rather go through 50 or 100 uh, concept sheets. Night class, it's material, it's designed to retain the first year medical student. So in medical school of all the four years, the highest dropout and fail rate is within the first year. So that's the first two semesters. The intent of creating night class is to retain medical students and serve as like primary prevention, maybe even prophylactic in nature for physician burnout, because the theory is that burnout begins as soon as, soon as after the first exam of medical school. So this is even before you become a resident like myself, or even before you becoming an attending doctor. How do you sign up for night class? We have a website that's going to launch in a few months. However, in this moment, you're going to sign up by email. I'll leave my email, you'll email me, and then I'll send you a contract agreement. We have three plans of night class. The first plan, um, this is kind of one of our newer plans, is the one subject plan. This allows a student to get a trial of one subject and see how it suits them. The most popular is the fulfillment plan. Over 100 students have already used this plan in the last year. It's one semester's worth of material. So that'll be five subjects. It's at $399. This is a really favored plan because within these five subjects, there's not just integration week by week, but it also crosses over from one subject to the next. So med one, um, the first um, topic is usually foundations in most schools because this is the attempt of medical schools to integrate MCAT into medical school. So this has like the highest success rate too. Students have scored as low as 30s to 40s on their first exam, uh, joined night class and improved to like the upper 70s, upper 80s, the low 90s from those initial lower scores. The last one, this is a very popular one too, called the all in all package. Um, it's basically you get all 10 subjects. Now these are for the gunner. So once they finish their first semester, they start covering or priming themselves for med two between the break. But how to use night class as a supplementary tool. The reason why we call it night class is it's to be done at the end of the day. Now when night class comes in, it's gonna be Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. only night class videos, okay? Now this is aside from your study week, which I'll talk about later. But the videos, you can pause it, but no writing notes. Writing notes is a very primitive feature. We don't do that anymore as physicians. It leads to novels of, of notes. And when it comes to study week, it's there's not enough time to sift through all of that. So you could only take the pertinence of what is going to be on your exam. So let's say you have four weeks to study for an exam. After the four weeks, they give you five days to study. So what do you do? You want to stay very organized, particularly from your first few exams in medical school in the in the first year, because you're going to take a lot of exams, right? Like I'm, I have exams still too, you know, beyond step three, I'm still taking exams, you know, it's kind of the doctor theme to be professional exam takers. These five days of study before your exam, on day one, you're going to skim the PowerPoints 
from week one on what was highlighted as deemed to be important by a professor. Okay, so after that's done, over, you move on to concept sheets. You're making sure you understand all these concepts that I provided for you on night class because this is basically your tools in the toolbox. This allows you to be versatile prior to being introduced to questions. There are such thing as prematurely approaching questions. I don't want anyone doing questions until exam week. So you're gonna go through these concept sheets, make sure you understand them very well. And when you get into the late afternoon, you can move on to practice questions. Normally there's NBME questions floating around on campus. They can be old, retired NBME questions, that's fine. Lastly, you can email your professors for practice questions. That's very appropriate. Um, a lot of students do that. Day two, it's very similar to day one. You skim through PowerPoints from week two in the morning. Then you move on to concept sheets for week two. Understand those concept sheets forward and back. Spend time with them, okay? If you can integrate things that you've learned between lecture and, and night class, you're on the right path. Next thing is you finish the day with practice questions. Anywhere from 20 to 40 is sufficient. So you reach finally day five of the five day study break, right? I expect you to know how many questions are gonna be in your, on your exam. So if you have 50 questions on your exam, on day five, you need to do 50 questions timed, just like the exam. Now the average time to do a question in medical school is uh, 90 seconds. Some of them are a little faster, you get 75 seconds per question, okay? But timed. So you do these 50 questions, then, you relax. You relax the rest of the day. If you've created a formula sheet for, let's say, the topic of cardiology is probably going to have formulas in it. This is something that you look at the night before, and that's it. Day five, the day before your exam, you're expected to have energy. During this study week, do not burn out. Do not overdo it. Do not try to be a hero. You're supposed to pace yourself. You're priming yourself for performance, okay? What to avoid in medical school? Sleeping less than seven hours. And when you cover my neurology video, when we talk about sleep cycles, out of eight hours of sleep, the second four hours of sleep is where 70% of your REM cycle happens. So this is your long-term memory consolidation, okay? So you study, you spend all day studying something, you go to sleep. Is that information going to be there a week later when you come to the exam? Well, it depends. Did you sleep? If you're sleeping four or five hours, you don't have long-term memory consolidation. No matter how hard you studied that day, it's not going to be there for the exam. Other things to avoid, teaching assistants and TA sessions. So a teaching assistant is someone that had the semester you're in previously. They usually scored above an 80. This does not mean they've mastered the content to a point where they can have you score very well. Okay, you need someone that's mastered the content. All right, so watching videos multiple times, your time is your most precious asset. You need to sleep, you need to study effective material. If you're watching a video multiple times, it is not good medical content. You're rereading PowerPoints. You go to class, right? You read PowerPoints, and then you look at them again during your study week. That's three exposures to the same material, right? You know, you're in the one percentile of applicants that get into medical school. We all know you're smart. You don't need to do things like that. If you're sleeping and having good study hygiene, like not studying in busy, noisy areas, you will retain the information. Practice questions are reserved for study week. But if you do them the second or third week when your exam is going to be the fifth week, you don't have enough foundation to tackle those. You have to let it settle and marinate. Then when you get to study week, have at it. Take all those tools that are in the toolbox and put together those questions and come up with some good answers. Do not take notes. This is a primitive thing, guys. Do not write notes. You're reinventing the wheel, okay? The biggest thing is that you need to make sure what's pertinent is up here in your mind because you cannot walk into the exam room with your notes. It's only worth what you remember. So that's why sleeping is so important. Do not use more than two resources. And this is because there's an innate characteristic when you take an exam and you're thinking about what the answer is, you doubt yourself if you can't remember where you learned that from.
that burns time. You need to get through these exams swiftly and not lose extra energy for things like that. Never do more than two resources, ever. Night class content is geared towards NBME exams. NBME exams are associated with step one exams. Night class content geared towards both of them, yes. And why is that? Because there's no memorizing in medical school, guys. There's no memorizing. Everything is concept-based, everything. Whether you realize it now or later, it's all concept-based. All medical school is recycling concepts. The same concepts that are in step one are the same concepts in step two, are the same concepts that are in step three. They just recycle them. Let me tell you about these exam writers and be me in step one. They're always going to sound vague on their questions. They're always going to be misleading with minimal information. Therefore, you can't memorize. How could you apply memorization to that? You can be vague and misleading with minimal information and still get the answer right if you know the concept. If you know the concept. Here's this thing I wanted to talk about, and this is a very, very important thing. What we see a lot in medical school is something called narrative sickness. And it's basically, you can envision a professor standing at the podium, they have 50 minutes for a presentation, and they have 120 slides to cover. It is so important for them in their job to get through all 120 slides. This yields medical students memorizing and cramming and going through PowerPoints over and over and over, and they're wondering why it doesn't stick. The reason for night class is to give you concepts so you don't find yourself memorizing. You're able to explain things to your peers. You're able to reason things very, very well on your exam. So currently, there are no other concept-driven medical videos, none. There are no current resources that actively integrate from topic to topic, from week to week, from subject to subject. How do some medical resources fail medical students? They're out of scope of the topic. Knowledge is not gauged by someone's volume of knowledge. It's gauged upon audience ability to use it. So what I've done is I filtered, I've reformulated into medical concepts that they're more practical to use to apply to your exam to get better scores. What is a good medical resource? These are not good medical resources. So non-MDs, I'm talking about online here. This is one example, Ninja Nerd. This is a physician assistant someone that's never taken the exams that you're about to sit for in medical school. But MDs that are outdated, I'm talking about MDs that have not taken these exams you're sitting for in over a decade or more, maybe two or three decades. I'm being very blunt and direct about it, okay? So an example of that could be Boards and Beyond. This is written by an MD that had been out of medical school for 13, 14 years. So if they've been out of school for that long, how relevant is what they're telling you to your exam? The last thing to call out is PhD-driven knowledge, okay? Kaplan, a lot of PhDs on board. There's no integration there. Often they end up out of scope because PhDs don't take the NBME exams. So the takeaway is you need a teacher or a content creator who's taken the exams recently, the exams you're sitting for right now, and can build your medical knowledge in a way that lines up for your upcoming exams too. Now we'll go through the 10 topics of night class. First off, foundations, muscular skeletal system, gastroenterology, neurology, behavioral science, cardiovascular, respiratory, renal, endocrine, lastly, reproductive. Sign up instructions here. You can email me at doctor, without the second O, doctor, D-O-C-T-R, nightclass at gmail.com. For those who wish to help out a friend, will be offered rebates. And be sure to check out my Facebook teaching page reviews from previous uh, night class students.